but this is the basically the <coughs> permanent Chalice of the Void deck. Yes. And uh, like I see, lots so, of ways to cast a Chalice of the Void on one on turn one. Yes. Which shuts off Brainstorm, Ponder, uh, all, the, good all cards. the good cards. Yeah. Uh, one of the interesting things to note is that previously there was a big argument about, well, is Chalice of the Void the card I want? Do I play Goblin Walder because that's a one drop? Can I play both even? Uh, the answer is actually yes now because yes. uh, one of the lands in this deck is Cavern of Souls. Yes. And it stops your cards from getting countered by, by your, your own chalice. So, uh, Wasteland pass from Zach. Uh, Preordain for Chris. Looks like Chris has multiple misdirections in his hand. Mm -hmm. uh, recent re addition to the format with Ender Draw coming back. Yeah. Uh, so, Chris's deck, a sneak and show deck, uh, is named for the two ways it has to cheat in creatures. Uh, sneak attack and show and tell. Yep. And both cheat in creatures. And then also plays the full eight copies of Emrakul, the Aeon's Torn, and four copies of Bristlebrand to um, have yeah. creatures to cheat into play. This looks like a very standard list based on what we've mm -hmm. seen in the past. You know, All right, looks Ponder, like a uh, metal worker uh, coming out from oh, Zach. Oh boy. This is the best card in Zach's deck, not close. Yes. Uh, I Zach agree. can probably reveal his hand and cast some upwards of, uh, you know, 15 mana of cards. That's a brainstorm for those of you who aren't familiar with the new dual deck art. Okay, this is. Is it Vrus Golgari? Yes. Okay. Uh, actually, the first time I saw Metal Worker played in a, cons I believe, in a uh, Star City Open, it was at like a four or five-o table of a tournament, mm -hmm. and the person asked, "Is that card legal?" Uh, it wasn't always legal. It was not. At the time, it definitely was, and the person, I believe, it was Bomb Michael Bomholt, ended up finishing second at that open. Yeah, uh, he's a, he's actually a, Mike Bomholt <coughs> is a uh, Cincinnati yep. area. Anyway, he loves. He loves his stacks. Yeah. Loves workshops his, or legacy style. Yeah, he's a vintage guy too. He plays Mishra's Workshop. Um, this is the legacy version of the Workshop deck. Mishra's Workshop, a little uh, not legal. <laughs> yeah, a, a little bit too good. No. Uh, especially because we get to play with four Trinitsphere in this format. Mm -hmm. Zachary choosing to play with three of that card. Right. Um, It'll be interesting. Trinitsphere actually not all that strong against uh, Chris's deck. Uh, because his uh, ways to kill people sure uh, already cost three already, or more. Yeah, already cost three or more. It does shut off his cantrips, the similar yes. to Chalice of the Void. If he doesn't already have it, um, mm -hmm. making Ponder cost three mana, not and not a great deal. And then Chris also is cut off from uh, Force of Will. Yeah, well it also hurts. Um, one of the things that the Sneak and Show deck can do is sneak in a Gristlebrand and try and draw a Lotus Petal and an Emrakul. Yeah. You can't do that with a three sphere in play because Lower spell costs three mana to play. Yeah, um... <laughs> Trinisphere is one of the, uh... Another strange card to play with. Yeah, uh... Trinisphere makes... is a three mana artifact. Alright, let's see what Zach... First yeah. off, let's see what Zach's gonna try and dump into play. We got a Titan... Sundering Titan, Dark Steel Citadel, Worm Coil Engine, Mox right. Opal, Metal Worker, Ten Lolo... Ten mana floating. <laughs> very mediocre ten mana from Metal Worker here. I think we're going to see a Sundering Titan come down here. I believe so as well. Uh, unfortunately for Zach, there's no um, no disruption. So the Sundering Titan, if it gets Force of World, it's Force of World. And it's like only going to blow up one doesn't land. doesn't have it. Yeah, so. Boom. The casual 8 mana Avalanche Riders. So it's a 7-10. I believe Zach can also cast this Warm Coil Engine here. Too. Yes, he had 10 mana, so he has... Ten. He plays the Dark Steel Citadel, Citadel and so he has two floating Correct. out of his ten. So two plus the six, or two he plus may the four. Play he has around play. days. No, nope. uh, he just shoving. Disagree. It. Yeah, Warm I foil. would just play two. Days is probably game over. Uh, Chris cannot yeah. afford to return a land. Sure. And also, a lot of the Seek and Show decks, I believe, may be cutting days. A lot of these Show and Tell decks are very iffy on whether that's even a good card for them. Yeah, I believe they should. Okay, Chris. All right, so I see a lotus petal. So it's funny that uh, Zach is going to play out his giant creatures, and then Chris is just going to try and play out his. Uh, yeah, he's gonna. <clears throat> okay, he's gonna sneak attack. Maybe like uh, Chris could have saved uh, Zach some trouble. What? What? Why what? is the sneak attack in the graveyard? Oops. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just um, kidding. All are right, we so. two turns removed from the brainstorm or one? Because I don't. Did uh, 
we did not see him fetch after the brainstorm, so he may be mm -hmm. brainstorm locked out of this game. Yeah, and this is uh, an actual thing. Yep. Um, coming in for 14. Yep. Seven uh, plus six plus uh, one. Zach gaining six, uh, which actually is relevant because Chris has an Emrakul at hand. Zach wants that to actually play. doesn't do anything. Yeah. It, he's over 15 life. Uh, I didn't see that he had another land in his hand, but if he didn't, the one of the ways he can, he wants to play a metal. Oh, I guess he gets the Worm Coil tokens. Yeah, so he, I guess he will get matter. the Worm yeah. Coil tokens. But if you're above 15, I forgot about those. So he he's Chris a, actually did have both, the red source. But yeah, he has a. But he is in fact dead to the Worm Coil tokens. Exactly. <laughs> That's an Emrakul and uh, <coughs> Chris far, yeah. far back. Even Gristle uh, Friend doesn't do too much. Because right. it'll have to chump block well, and he can't draw seven he off could, of it. Oh, he can't. That's correct. Yeah. He could try to draw seven into another Gristle Brand. He doesn't have Lotus seven Petal. life. No, he attacks with the Gristle Brand. Oh, okay, yeah. Draw sevens, tries to hit Lotus Petal Gristle Brand, blocks with the Gristle Brand, takes zero on the attack, and mm -hmm. then tries to. Yeah, I think Zach is. Yep, and we're done here. It's, it's, it's amazing. When somebody can actually mount a board that beats an Emrakul <laughs> Annihilate You yeah. attack or a Gristlebrand <laughs> draw seven. Yes. Just easily. Easily. Okay, so uh, that was also on turn three that that board was graded. That yeah. Was, yeah, that it was, was turn, turn two Metal Worker. Turn three. three <laughs> 13 mana worth of creatures. This is good. Yeah, so. Oh, sorry, it's more. 14. One of my horse. favorite anti show and tell cards is a one of copy in Zach Carroll's deck. It is a spine of Isha. Ooh. So he <laughs> he already has that main deck. Yeah. Uh, he also has some other really good ones here. He has mm -hmm. Metamorphs. Frexy Metamorph, uh, which does not good... work off of Show and Tell because it has to copy the, something that's already in play. Correct. But if they Show and Tell in an Emrakul, you can cast yes, the Metamorph. Yeah. Correct. Um, he has Summoning Traps as another anti counter spell measure. Mm -hmm. He has Ensnaring Bridge, which is very good against yeah, Show and that's, Tell. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Phyrexian Revoker, which will name Sneak Attack, will yep. definitely come in. Uh, it can also name uh, Lotus Petal. Lotus Petal. Uh, Phyrexian Revoker, different from Pything Needle. It can Revoker name... cannot name lands, but it can name. It can't stop mana sources. Correct. So Lotus Petal can be stopped. Mm -hmm. Lion's Eye Diamond is one of the usual uses for Phyrexian Revoker. Yeah, and that is a mana ability. I think Phyrexian Revoker is a uh, t very underrated. Card. Yeah, it doesn't go in a lot of decks. Really good. But it's not a card that people ever consider. I really like it in the um, the mono white disruption deck. Okay. Like I Death agree. and Taxes, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Is the name. It's possible those decks need to play real like creature creatures that they can't afford a two one. Mm -hmm. So that might be the reason it doesn't see as much play. But yeah, it's definitely one of the better hate pairs for that deck. So out of so, so if Zach Carroll is like siding Ooh. out something, we have another anti show and tell card. We have a duplicate. This is like a. <laughs> like, just walking into a <laughs> sea of landmines here. Yeah, there's a duplicate. <clears throat> so, you show and tell, uh, you know, uh, uh, Emrakul into play. Boom, 15 I, 15. Yeah. Attack. Is this I, good? Will, I will take your. You dead? His duplicate can eat a guy that just comes into play. Yes. Yeah, what um, I was saying before him with uh, Fracture Metamorph, basically, uh, when you play, when you show and tell, yep. Uh, the card you uh, show and tell into play, if it's a a clone, clone effect, you cannot clone. You have to clone something that was already in play. Yeah, it alters how it would enter the battlefield before it's in the battlefield mm -hmm. or on the battlefield, and both of the permits are entering play at the same time. So they cannot copy each other. They do not see each <laughs> yes. other entering the battlefield. So you have to you have to be able to copy <coughs> something else. Correct. Um, so what about Chris's sideboard? We probably have Echoing Truths coming in. Okay. I could see. I don't actually know if Pithy Needle is good. I don't think uh, it is. Yeah, Chris has two, but it's not fantastic. It cannot stop the Metal Worker. Can't stop Metal Worker. It can't stop. It c stops Kuldotha, Forge Master, and Lightning Greaves. Okay. I can see that card being something that Chris boards in, but without seeing Zach's deck list, doesn't realize that it's not good. What would you side out if you're Zach? He's got like a couple. He's got the two Mana Morphs, three Summoning Traps. If you assuming he wants those. Probably not those. That's a little yeah. ambitious. So two two metamorphs, one and snaring bridge, maybe two two, two revoker. That's five Four cards. Or crucible of worlds. Uh, yeah, it's not a grindy crucible of worlds. Is for the uh, grinding matchups. We got two crucibles. Uh, Warm coral engine's probably not that good. 
Yeah, I could see that. There's three of Steel those. Steel Hawkeye seems terrible. Yeah, absolutely. I 100% yeah. agree. Kind of like Wormcore, somewhat like it can... Live through an Emrakul? Yeah, sort of. Well, it, if you don't die to the Emrakul, it will kill them. <coughs> yeah. Um, or start working on it. Let's see. Chris has an Ancient Grudge in the sideboard, but no Greenland to flash it off. Or flash it back off of, just Lotus Pounce. Wow. Uh, he's got a really cool sideboard card that doesn't Ooh. matter in this matchup. This uh, card... Pioneered, I believe, by Jerry T for Grand Prix Atlanta last year. Okay. Uh, this card is a not of this brand. world. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, not of this world is a 7-mana Tribal Instant Eldrazi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it costs 7 to cast, but it costs 7 less to... 7 colors. It costs 7 less to cast if, it's tar if a spell is targeting a creature with converted mana cost 7 or higher that you control, I believe. Mm -hmm. And it counters target spell targeting a creature you control. Is it only spells? Can it I, I don't know if it's abilities. I, yeah. I would have to look that one up. I know the card is not <laughs> in this world. Yeah. So uh, we've got some of that going on in the sideboard here on Chris Song's side. <laughs> yeah. Again, some more awesome legacy cards. Yeah. Okay, this card's constructed playable now. Okay. It's kind of funny because not of this world would be really cool in both of these decks. Yeah. <laughs> um, Zach has some six mana cards. So. Oh, that's true. So there you go. Not of this world. A permanent you control. Yeah, it costs seven less. If you if it yep. targets a spell uh, or ability, and it targets a permanent you control. Yeah. So it's a sort of a faith shield type effect. Yeah, it costs seven less to play if it targets a spell or ability that targets a creature you control with seven power. Power or seven or greater. <laughs> so Gristlebrand or Emrakul. Yeah. Jeez, that's a uh, that's a good one. Dug that one out of the uh, draft commons, draft on commons box again. Yeah. Just like what was the one earlier? Uh, recross the paths. And we saw Chronic Flooding yesterday. Oh, man. All right, we have a Scalding Tarn getting a Volcanic Island. Very aggressive against, against the Wasteland deck. Wasteland deck, yes. It One card that Chris is playing for a Sneak Attack instead of a Show and Tell. Yeah, it's probably <sighs> better, his better play, because there are definitely some whammies that Zach Carroll can... Put uh, in? Yes. Yeah. Um, even even something like a Kadolta Forge Master probably <coughs> yeah kills you before yeah. Um, some of these sneak and show lists I know I've been boarding into through the breach. Yes, just as an extra effect to not have to be able to win the game without casting a show and tell. Yes. So echoing truth in Chris's hand. Uh, an ancient you tomb. You borrowed as well. Type mm -hmm. of from another player. Please come up to the main event stage. Once again, it's like a red card in his hand. Draws a Bristle Brand. I think that's Ancient Grudge. Yep. <clears throat> He's drawing two of his sideboard cards. We'll see if they uh, work out for him. Like, he might. Does he have another source of blue mana? I don't believe he does. Oh, but dodges the Wasteland. Ancient no, Tomb. No uh, turn one Wasteland. Maybe. It's entirely possible that. Uh, Chris doesn't want to run the Wasteland without getting some advantage on first. Yeah. He wants to get ahead before he uses the Wasteland. Or at least oh, get into a position where it's Zach still has his Trinisphere, okay. and he has one in his hand. But it's I not believe right here, but yeah, I believe uh, City of Trade is gonna come down for Zach, and probably Lodestone Golem, I guess. Yep. Now what card, does this one do? Card is something else. Wins games of vintage and apparently legacy too. Yeah. Um, probably gonna get Ancient Grudge. Yeah, unfortunately, not that great against this Ancient Grudge. Yeah, okay. The very typical vintage answer to that card as well. Mm -hmm. Chris down to 17 life. Yeah. Both players have taken two from their uh, ancient tombs. Chris is not of the wow. fourth mana. So for if Zach can attack. get a wasteland into play, that'd be. Looks like he's gonna metal worker. Yeah, maybe three. Maybe three spheres. I don't. I like the metal worker here because uh, you get blight steel colossus. He does have a blight seal. Yeah. Oh, that is a definite whammy if there's a show and tell cast this game. That's not too bad. <laughs> Though, that's actually really cool that, like, you attack with it into an Emrakul, the Emrakul becomes a 3 3, and then the <laughs> Emrakul attacks back and kills the blight seal. Yeah. <laughs> One floating. Right, three so. spear. 
Looks like a intuition. intuition. Yeah. So intuition can, might be able to get lands. Yeah. I don't know why we're doing this. In res is it in response? I'm not sure. One way or the other. Yeah. First to fifteen. So he has a sneak attack and a crystal brand in his and hand. An echoing truth. An echoing truth. Do you just get? He's getting uh, show. Oh, he's gonna get show and tells. Oh no. Oh no. He doesn't know about it. Oh jeez, that's. Oh. He's Ooh. basically gaining one mana out of this. He can just get lands, right? Um, I guess if he draws a land, he can sneak whatever his gristle brand into play as well. Yeah, he can draw a red source. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, that's a pretty standard line of play for that mm -hmm. deck. Especially against counter magic, you play the show until they have to counter, then you still have the yeah. sneak attack in hand. And you know, we were just talking about like this beats Spine of Ishaw, this beats Duplicate, mm -hmm. beats Phyrexian Metamorph. It's but a way to not, use show and tell as it, something it that isn't. Yeah, it won't be. It's basically Lotus Petal show and tell. Yeah. Except for uh, Lotus Petal turned off by this uh, Trinisphere. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Chris draws. Oh. There's the land. Alright, so. <clears throat> it looks like this Chris game is could actually going probably to... be over right here. Oh, if he only has a Gristlebrand, though. He we only don't... has Gristlebrand. He doesn't. I don't think he has Emrakul. And oh, then no. When he puts uh, Gristlebrand into play, he's going to get one up. He's going to get trumped by. They pop a Blightsteel Colossus. It's kind of cool that uh, Blightsteel Colossus is like basically racing 10 life when Chris has already paid almost 10 life. Yeah. <laughs> After this Ancient Tomb hit, yeah. yeah show and tell from Chris. He's like, yeah, it's good. Sure. How much does your spell cost? Mine costs 12. <laughs> <clears throat> How much mana are you saving? They're confirming how to resolve a show and tell. When, um, uh, yeah, Trinisphere is. They're, they're just double checking to make sure uh, Trinisphere. Okay. Does not affect, like actually putting the creature into play. It does not. This is not casting a spell. Oh boy. Boom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oh, oh he has Emrakul. Spaghetti cool. monster. That's a game, I assume. Uh, I mean, oh yeah, because they'll have a uh, another. Emrakul back. So sorry. Oh, he tried so hard there. It even has a metamorph in hand. Would not have done anything. Basically, yeah, if it does a good thing, yeah, sacrifice your annihilator does not uh, sacrificing yep. permanent. Yeah, that looks like it. Oh, I, 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 Chris assumed that the game was being conceded. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're picking up. Uh, you gotta shuffle some creatures, emeralds in. Yeah, no, he doesn't. He just forgot his trigger. Okay, <laughs> it's okay. We're shuffling in this turn, anyways. I'll let you put that ability on the stack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Uh, Even though uh, show and tell. This is why we don't show and tell. Yeah. If you're gonna, if you're gonna avoid it, that's. Kind of what you want to do with show and tell, like use it to save a mana on your sneak attacks. Yeah, it's so weird how you can't, like, the only cards that you actively want to show and tell anymore are enchantments. There's mm -hmm. just so many Caracas running around, or like, yep. all these things that make, yeah, I'll make a Gristle Brand for three mana. Is that good anymore? No. No, not really. Yeah. Like, the tension sphere, right? Uh, the other thing is, uh, a lot of times you, uh, the problem with Gristle Brand in these decks. Is it just draws you more ways to put a Gristle Brand into play? Yeah. And so you kind of actually need the Bane Slayer to be good. Uh oh, the seven seven. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. It's not Gristle like Brand is a split card or a, a <coughs> dual card between Bane Slayer Angel and, and Necrophot's Barthing. Yeah. Uh, I've seen there's some really weird Reanimator Stormless where like you yeah. put a Gristle Brand into play and then you draw your deck and then you I, I cube draft those all the time. You cube draft those all the time. Yeah, that's apparently sort of a deck in Legacy, yeah. but... Seems ambitious. Uh, it, it seems so, like so many card slots mm -hmm. to put a Gristlebrand into play that it's really only like draw three, draw four, 
because it's gonna be like four more like end tunes. Yeah, and, and you're investing so much work that your storm shell isn't that good on its own. Yeah. Yeah. So Zach gets to be on the play this last game, which means he could, you know, just play a Thurner Sphere on turn one, right? Can yep. Zach play a Thurner Sphere on turn one? Uh, he has one. He has mox one Mox Diamond. Diamond. I'm used to seeing. He has four Grim Model lists as well. I'm used to okay. seeing more Mox Diamonds in these lists, but yeah, uh, Zach has <coughs> opted for Mox Opal, so a little less explosive, but a little more stable. Right. Which I, I like. Any any uh, amount of stability I can get out of these, uh, you know, basically mono brown decks. Mm -hmm. Mud decks, if you will. Yeah. Any amount of stability, he, anything that works more often than it doesn't. Right. I was trying to figure out if there's some way for him to put a Mox Opal into play with Metalcraft on turn one without using mana. It just doesn't work. Uh, right. Like, yeah. I mean, it would probably involve like chalices for zero. But you need multiple chalices for zero because your you, land has to be a Ancient Tomb, a soul land. Yeah. Right. Okay. But you could just grim model with Chronosphere go. Yeah. Yep, dead. I'm not casting spells. I mean, Chris Dex could. He Chris could Dex, just, yeah. just naturally have it. Yeah, just like land, land, four drop, <laughs> kill you. Yeah. Yeah. There's a Karn Liberated in Zach's deck as well. Yeah. Can't sh uh, show and tell that one into play. You cannot. Show and tell was printed before Planeswalkers, so they decided that they just wanted to leave it at the types of permanents yeah. that existed then. Mm hmm. <laughs> However, Eureka is all permanence. Yep. You can Eureka and Eagle Balls. Yeah. I don't, you cannot Hypergenesis and Eagle Balls. We well, can. They're, they're both the uh, same. Uh, really? I, I believe both cards should be worded the same. I thought Hypergenesis was worded differently. It's okay. very strange. Yeah. Uh, Hypergenesis is basically the broken card. Yep. Hypergenesis, you cannot put a Planeswalker oh, in play with. Interesting. I think this actually came up at a uh, Legacy Open once. Uh, I actually heard a, a story from uh, from Zach about this. Uh, is uh, one of his opponents round one of a Legacy Open had a uh, had a Hypergenesis deck with Nicobolus in it, and it was also Omniscience, but he's just like trying to show and tell. Yeah. Doesn't work. Nicobolus, yeah. Try again. Okay. Chalice one go. Okay. That's I think that's almost stronger than Trinosphere. <laughs> Possibly. Big die comes down. Right, so basically Chris is going to have to naturally have it. He only has the help of intuition to help him find this combo. It looks like he has part of it. He He has intuition. Okay. Wasteland and play for Zach. Oh, we have three sphere two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't, I, it might be a little late for that one. Yeah, I don't think these uh these cards I don't think the sphere does does much, much that for the chalice him. doesn't already yeah. do. Exactly. Yeah, especially because the lotus spell is already in play. Uh yeah, one of the things about the seek control decks is they don't have spells that cost two for spell snare. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if chalice one and three sphere are in play at the same time. They do the same thing? Yep, just uh Trinosphere shuts off force of will. Mm-hmm. And which could actually Lotus be like metal. sort of a thing. Yeah, sure. It's kind of like a city of solitude. Mm-hmm. Or a defense grid. Yeah. Wow. City of Freighters go. It looks like he's gonna intuition to find. He has the Gristle Brand in hand. He's gonna find a show and tell probably. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's sneak attack if he's not willing to risk. Thing, uh, there's a Forge Master in uh, Zach's hand. Oh boy. Wasteland uh, goes, City. Goes for the. Floats the mana, intuitions. How we get sneak attack? Maybe, maybe, because he has a. I don't think we have enough mana anymore because we got Wasteland. Oh yeah. Mana. It looks like he's going for the Volcano. He is going for the okay. sneak attacks. Okay. So Zach's gonna have a couple more turns to set up. Oh, he has a Lodestone Golem 2 and an Ancient Tomb. This is gonna take a while. <coughs> that's, that's not gonna be fast enough. Yeah. We've there's also a Metamorph. Oh, really? For uh, Zach. Oh, I believe. Gee. So we're yeah. just gonna double go We're just gonna go into full on vintage mud mode. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Double <coughs> Lodestone Golem, copy it, tag you for 10. Tag you uh, for 10. Yeah. So. Good luck casting your 4 drop with two lands. 
it, Lodestone Golem is not an artifact spell, it costs one more to play. Mm -hmm. uh, worth noting is that Lodestone Golem doesn't stack on top of Trinosphere. So if the Chalice wasn't already countering mm -hmm. uh, one drops, they would still just cost base three. Yeah. Because load Trinosphere applies after all other extra costs are take or all additional mana costs are taken into account. Yep. So it just says, are you going to end up paying less than three for the spell in the end? Mm -hmm. If so, pay three. Yeah. So if you have like a replicate spell like Shattering Spree, if you pay like four red for it, you're all good. Even yeah. though it costs one. It, that also dodges Chalice of the Void because the replicate copies just end up on the stack from the mm -hmm. trigger. It's funny that Zach Hero is going to take a ton of damage from his land. Yeah, he's going to probably win the game at like four life. Yeah, there's also still. Oh, there's Hawkeye. multiple metamorphs. Yeah, oh. I don't think there's. Uh, I don't think there's life to cast multiple metamorphs. Yeah, because this is going to cause uh, cause Zach Carroll six life. Yeah. If he wants to copy the Lotus Golem, absolutely wants to. Hold up. Uh, apparently Chris has a question about something. He's probably asking the Trinosphere question. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, Chris has Echoing Truce and Ancient Grudges, which will still cost three in this exact situation. Yes. And this Force of Will in his hand. Yes, this Force of Will costs three, and... That's interesting. Uh, if he has a blue card, he can force this loot on Willem, mm -hmm. and that so, makes that like locks Zach out of playing spells. Yeah. I also, sacrifice uh, cost Chris's Lotus Petal he may not need. Oh, That's true. Zach just passed. Wow. He is afraid of taking all this damage. I think. Yeah. I, he sure. possibly doesn't want to die to one Gristlebrand hit. That's that's possible, but I think he will die to one Gristlebrand hit. Yes. <laughs> Mark Kelso, uh, you're in the room, please come Looks like Chris is fetching so we can cast another Lotus Petal. Yep, and he just drew a Lotus Petal and he's going to try and get that one into play. I'd have really liked to see Metamorph. Or even... He doesn't actually have to cast Metamorph this turn though to keep the clock the same. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's also... He also may not also, want to cast it a, into untapped oh, mana because of an yeah. ancient grudge or something yeah. similar. Um, so if Chris taps out for this Lotus Petal here, mm -hmm. you actu it's actually tapping out because you cannot cast a two mana spell with Trinosphere in play. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think that Zach just says, okay, you're on a one turn clock. Yeah. Kill you next turn. And it locks Chris out of Sorry. sneak attack range mm -hmm. because sneak attack will cost six to play. And yeah. the most that he can present next turn is six. And I think Zach has the, I don't know if it's a hard lock, but it's quite pretty, close. Pretty close if Zach decides to take it. Yeah. Chris could still draw an Ancient Grudge into something else. Yeah, Echoing Truth or whatever. Because what, Echoing Truth both. would really... Yeah, set yeah. him back. Or... Well, Echoing Truth would also cost Chris both of his... Or one of his Lotus Petals. Because mm -hmm. it would cost four through two uh, Lotus on Gums. Ditto, ditto the uh, Ancient Grudge. Let's see. Yep. Do a Dark Steel Citadel. Uh, that actually gives Zach access to Forge Master... Uh, or Metamorph. Uh, it also saves him two life on the Metamorph because yeah. he can tap a non-ancient two But life. he's going for... He's going for the Forge Master. Yeah, and I do I, not like that play. He might get punished here. Yeah, so he's going to a eight life. Oh, boy. And that's the Echoing Truth that would have punished him for the other play. <laughs> Jeez. So, Chris Conservative Kins, play pays off. Or not conservative. Yeah. Alternate Chris line. Kins, Sneak attack? He can sneak attack. And hit with uh, Gristlebrand. Correct. But he does not have Emrakul. I think he has to Gristlebrand here. Okay. But I don't think... Is it something he can afford to pay? He uh, can't afford to pay life because he dies on the swing back there. Yeah. It's possible that he doesn't sneak attack main phase. He just mm -hmm. casts the sneak and passes. Yeah. Uh, has a blocker and then hopes that Zach doesn't have a way around the Gristlebrand in play. Or, er, jeez, this is very strange. Yeah. Hopes that with access to his entire deck, Zach can't do something. I guess is the yeah. real situation we're in. Yeah. This is uh, quite a good match. I, 
I like Zach's position a little better, but I'm not sure. And like, he has it in the bag. Yeah, it, by no means is this over. Even though like things are gonna happen, we'll this game is only, the only gonna last a few other turns. Yeah, he's just showing that he's paying the correct yeah. amount of mana for his cards. Yep. So he can put in Gristlebrand. That's not enough. But that only puts Zach to one. Whereas, oh uh, yeah, if he can block with a Gristlebrand, he can if, gain the life and draw seven. Mm-hmm. Very interested to see what what kind of play Zach will make against this. He's got to know that something's that something, gonna something's up. What can what can he do? He can. Um, I like the line of if he <coughs> can he. Okay, so the thing is, it's possible that he just doesn't know if Chris has a creature or not. Mm-hmm. So, so he could try and send both both of his creatures in, but right. that just. Is very bad against Chris having a creature specifically Gristlebrand. Correct. Um, I think the play I would do is send only Lodestone Golem, and then if Chris uh, tries to sneak something in play, sacrifice it to Forge Master. Get something like a Spine of Ishar or a Duplicate. Yes, or a Sundering Titan because the Gristlebrand will die on end step, and it doesn't actually matter because it can't pay life. Right. So you get a Sundering Titan and kill both of his in-play red sources and he loses the game. He could get, like, that's why it's fine. Uh, would sun, well, Sundering Titan. Yeah, it's, it's, <coughs> Sundering Titan would blow up the two red, red sources. But, oh, yeah, like, the leave, leave him open a to bit. a top deck. That's what okay. uh, you could, alternatively, you could go get well, your lowly Frexian is, Revoker and shut off the sneak attack. True. You could sacrifice... Huh. So there's a lot of things that could happen. Uh, yeah, Zach is very capable of doing. Okay, uh, he senses the gristle rain. That that is that is the correct play. Chris drops to one. Mm -hmm. And Zach even has the potential of uh, doing just this. Pass it. Yeah, he can just pass. It. No, why would he? Why would he do it now? Chris, I don't know why he necessarily has to do it now. Uh. Yeah, it doesn't gain or save him any mana. He's going to EOT this. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I'm not sure why he sacrificed a Lotus Petal there. Uh, yeah. And he can just untap. Alright, so, basically, if... Chris... If Chris has nothing, uh, Zach's going to win regardless of what he does. But what, uh, can, Chris but what could, can Chris could do? He could draw another creature. He could draw an Emrakul. Right, and that would force Zach's hand if Zach prematurely goes for something like a duplicate. Uh, well, though, Chris has to, even if Chris gets an Emrakul, he doesn't have enough to Echoing Truth and Emrakul if, yeah. the, um, if the Forge Master leaves the Three Sphere and the uh, okay, Lodestone so in play. No, he still does because it... Lodestone and Twin Sphere don't stack, so he needs three oh, yeah, for the... Wow, well, I don't know what I'm thinking. Yeah. I don't, and, but if, wow. I'm, if I'm Zach, I would probably just eliminate... Uh, just leave the Lodestone Golem in play. Yeah. Because that is the actual threat. As long as you don't die on this turn, I think... Uh, I, I don't think he's dead on this turn. Yeah, I, me neither. I don't think he can afford to take a hit. Or yeah. he, I mean, he could, but like he shouldn't. Yeah. Alright, Zach going for something likely here. He's picking up his hand, but I think his uh, play is all on the. On the yeah. In play. He on the actually has no instance in his deck. It's okay. Right. Aside from summoning trap. <laughs> <laughs> With all of our green mana. I actually don't think he can cast summoning trap. Oh, he has two mox opus and mox down. Yeah. Here. Okay. He can barely cast summoning trap. All right, it's gonna activate it. What would you? What three artifacts would you sacrifice? Clearly, Dark Steel Citadel is one of them. I think we sack. I think if we have the three sphere. We don't need the chalice. I would actually prefer the. Okay, yeah. Keep the keep the sphere over the chalice. What about it's uh, like? What about bo sacrificing both of them? That's possible. 
There's like I that leaves yeah. you with three threats in play. Yeah, and I believe the card that Zach is going to get is duplicate. duplicate. Yep. Yeah, there's definitely no way that he. Okay, it's a, he skipped over it. He has something else in mind. Maybe a spine of his shaw. I think it's duplicate. Because even if he has an ancient grudge and an emrakul in his hand, mm -hmm. I guess you'd have ancient grudge and a gristlebrand. Oh, that's actually real. If he gets the spine and blows up the sneak, even if he goes to one on the attack and Chris goes to nine, mm -hmm. uh, Chris but, is, has to get another another mana into play, another sneak, and another turn. So I think you actually may have wanted to blow up the sneak attack. Okay. <clears throat> um, I kind of like the spine and spine the gristle brand. Uh, basically, this is a uh, this is a hedge like you can attack with just the lodestone golem again next turn. Um, if if uh, Chris has something, or like if he has another creature, you can now still have three artifacts to sack. What's your third? What do you play? Oh, the spine. The spine, yeah, the spine, the lodestone golem, oh, okay. and the. Uh, Forge Master. I mean, we're all trying to figure out situations of playing around another Gristle Branding Chris's yeah. hand, I think, when he just doesn't have... Yeah, yeah, he clearly doesn't have anything, and we, yeah, we... We know that. We know that, but, but you Zach, know, Zach doesn't, and, yeah. he, you know, it's, you know, he wants to make the, the right play. Right. Something. Other thing, like, Gristle Brand oh. becomes a 7-7 seven, seven attacker, as opposed to just having an artifact in play, so, like, I might have gotten... Du du duplicate, yeah. Um, a 7-7 seven, seven there. Yeah, that doesn't beat interactive spell plus a gristle brand though. No. So definitely a very interactive end game considering what had occurred that game. Yeah, I mean like uh Zach's draw is a you know very excellent.